Hello out there and welcome to all you podcast people. We are back after a uh, unintended hiatus. Uh, last week we were uh, talking about, or we, we did have a conversation, Dan. We had a great conversation about we love. Did. And uh, it's probably know, our most prof- profound discussion that we've had yet. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, we were both we were both feeling and looking lovely, and uh, you know what the technology just did not did not cooperate. Uh, there was a I don't know if it was an internet issue or if it was a hosting issue uh, with the web page or you know te- technical user error. Yeah, I could you know I mean like I, it it was kind of a throwback to the tech talk days. Uh, uh, yes, at, at the humble beginnings of what is now a global phenomenon that is day four devotions. Yes. Um, but it just, it just was not going to work. And, uh, look, we, we got bits and pieces of audio and video and they didn't particularly line up. It just got to the point where it just, it wasn't going to work. That's a really long way to, to say we had technical difficulties, but we are here today and we are just going to move on to the next core. And today we're going to talk about worship and, uh, you know what, there's, there's some love involved in uh, inside of that framework for sure absolutely or at least there ought to be you know when you when you talk about worship uh the subject being broached within the church unfortunately what often comes to my mind is worship wars man where people are uh you know if the, the, you want to look in the area i think especially in the modern era of the church if there's a subject that people have fought about if there's an area that churches have have split over man this is it and part of this is because we get so focused on methodology over substance within worship. We get we get tied into you know types of songs and volumes and songs and and uh, uh, you know styles of music and all of these things that are just they're so secondary and so to the point where really that's not even in the realm of what we're going to be discussing today as it comes to the subject of worship. And the reason is, is because that's not what the Bible focuses on. No. And, it, and it's so interesting, isn't it? Because when we think worship, we think of, you know, uh, the sing song and, you know, and, and a message and, and even talking about the worship wars. I mean, like the focal point of the worship wars was over the style of music, mm-hmm. like, like music was, the epitome and only way to worship God was like to what beat and pace and instrument that you right. were singing. And, you know, that, that misses it. That misses the essence of what you're doing, what's it intended for, and what's supposed to come of it. That's right. And, and again, I think that that's been synonymous. You've probably seen that printed in bulletins or for church services or whatever that, well, this is the worship part of the service. And then this is the prayer part of the service. And right. this is the preaching part. The, it's all the worship service, right? The same thing even when we talk about, oh, well, the worship leader, that's the guy with the guitar, that's the gal at the piano, the one that's that's leading worship rather than, I've heard the phrase before, I don't know how I sort of this all in my head, but the difference between a worship leader or the lead worshiper, right? right. The person who is, uh, you know, playing the guitar that, that's facilitating the music that we're all playing, or even better than that as a bass player, as we would all know, Um or, you know, the, the person who's like saying like, hey, we're all doing this together, like worship as, you know, as I worship. And uh, anyway, all that to say, the Bible doesn't emphasize that. We're going to look at a few verses of what the Bible does emphasize. And so we're going to start in the book of Acts where we see, you know, the New Testament worship taking place. And we're talking, looking at the very beginning of the church in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It's one of my favorite verses, actually. If you highlight or underline your Bible, uh, this is a good one to highlight or underline. It says, they, talking about, at this point, the whole church. Like, church has just, like, just started. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It highlights these elements of what the church devoted themselves to. And what we want to do is we want to see those as different elements of worship. And and look, understand too, you know, like even what we've been talking about inside of the worship wars and all these things, or the worship part of the worship service, um, this, this does not exist within a 24 uh, hour or two hour, if you would, period on a Sunday. Okay. Mm. Like, even as we're talking about worship and 
And, you know, if you fancy yourself a Acts 2 or part of an Acts 2 church, I always love that phrase because, I, like, it's, anyway, I'll just let that ride down, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I do. like, well, they didn't do it back then. Well, you know what? They didn't have electricity either. So let's just pump yeah. the brakes on that one there, Tony. But, you know, it's, I, I, the, the one that gets to me, uh, or the word that pops out to me as I read that, is they devoted themselves. Mm. Okay, so what, is, what does devotion look like? And I don't mean like, you know, with my little coffee and muffin and my 10 minutes of prayer time. I mean like they are devoted. Right. To the apostles teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and to prayer. And so to that I say, okay, when you look at it juxtaposed against this idea of a one uh, once a week worship service. Okay, so uh, years ago uh, before my kids were born, and maybe I think during the time when we only had one, um, one child, I had a, uh, a once a week golf membership, right? And so I played the game of golf uh, once a week. Now, I don't know how many of our listeners are avid golfers, um, but that's a good way if you want to just continue to kind of be at the same level or slightly worse over time, that's how you should do, go about golf mm-hmm. if you want to stink at it on a consistent basis is just do it once a week. What I'm saying is you can't get good at it doing it once a week. It's impossible. Um, and I don't think that I felt nor did anyone else feel that for me for a once a week, and it takes more than two hours to play around a golf, by the way, um, doing it once a week made me devoted to the game. Right. And yet, you know, when, if the sum total of what we know of our spiritual lives to be worship is two hours once a week in something that we sit in the same room as, I don't know that we are grasping it in quite the right way. It's interesting even to unpack that word, because that's what jumps out to me as well, that word devoted. And I often like to say when I'm in this passage, like in the Greek, it means devoted. And, you know, when we're we're doing this, we're going this day for devotion. And sometimes it can be easy to call, you know, this devotion in the same way that we call Sunday worship, as if like what you said, like, as if devotion is just, oh, well, devotion is when you sit down with your coffee and your muffin in the Bible. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a wonderful thing to do. That's like a wonderful and important thing. But what we want to, what, what shouldn't be lost in this, when we talk about like day four devotions, it's, it's an expression of the devoted life that we are trying to be devoted in this instance to the scriptures, devoted to spending time in God's word. And here it highlights some different aspects of worship that are this is the beautiful thing of the way God has designed it, that they are elevating to God, okay, that they are, you know, that is worshiping him. And the beautiful thing is that it is beneficial to the worshiper. It's beneficial to us. And so it's, they are devoted to the apostles' teaching, okay? So that the Holy Spirit has been granted in a special way, to some of these followers of Jesus who are like writing the New Testament, writing these letters, like who are who are teaching. So the church is devoted to that, to sound doctrine. The same way we should be devoted to the scriptures. And that's part of what we're trying to do with this thing. You know, they are devoted to uh, to learning. And it's and it's a it's a portion of worship. And and this is another one. The next thing on the list is that they were devoted also to fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's, that's part of your worship, right? Is that, that gathering. And it's like, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. Like there's there, when you look at scripture, there's not a lot uh, that looks at, you know, and again, too, I don't, I never want to take away. And I feel like we have to be careful about this because we've talked about it a lot lately. You never want to take away from your personal journey and look, Jesus is a personal savior. Um, But this Christian walk is done in collaboration. That's Mm -hmm. just, that's just the way it works. And that fellowship, and even that breaking of bread, mm-hmm. right? Like don't yeah. miss that on the list. People fellowship. Like whether, whether you think when it says to the breaking of bread, you're like, whoa, well, does that mean communion? Well, it doesn't really matter. And I'll tell you why is for a couple of reasons. It's like it certainly could include that. The word prior to it, fellowship, is the Greek word koinonia, which is also sometimes translated communion. Right. So that could be in there as well. That's going to be a significant part of it. But the, the table fellowship, like, because part of our worship we have to understand is that w- when we're acknowledging God, we're also acknowledge him as a royal priesthood, a, a, a people 
like a plurality. It says even, even to prayer. And it says they devoted themselves to prayer. You have to understand, again, for first century, first century Jews, like when you look at the written prayers, because they are so intensely community-minded, when you look at the like first century you know, or prior prayers of the Jews, they are almost always we prayers. That's you know right. what I mean? I don't mean small. I mean like first person plural. Like right. we implore you. We ask of you. We do. Like the idea that it's just like, oh, that's just my like individual self. It's just, and again, your personal time with God is wonderful. And we've we've I've said before, you know, the secret to prayer is prayer in secret. Like there's that's all valuable but what we want to see in particular in this is in our focus on worship is that these are all important aspects that they were devoted to it's not like we were devoted to this whole thing although that's also true it's they were devoted to the apostles teaching they were devoted to fellowship they were devoted to the breaking of bread they were devoted to prayer and all of that is housed in worship that's right all expressed again you know, if, if you think, well, like, I don't really like to sing, and so therefore I'm not really into worship, mm -hmm. um, that's that's not how it works. No. Uh, in fact, it, it's a good way to, you know, it's, it's how we live our life, right? And that really brings us to the, the passage in Romans. So Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, and depending on how you look at the book of Romans, this is kind of like a turning point. Uh, I think it is entirely. In, in uh, the book of Romans. Um so starting in verse one, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, or some translations would say your spiritual act of worship. Mm -hmm. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By testing, you may discern what the will of God is, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And so that kind of helps us funnel down. Because we were talking about, you know, even in Acts chapter 2, it says they, mm -hmm. right? And, like, you could say, well, they each individually. Yeah, sure. But it's they. It's this intense community-minded. And then as we move in here to Romans, we're seeing, you know, therefore I urge you. Now, this is you plural, but he's talking to them. Like, the way that you live. This is the way that you live your life. That it's, like, I, I kind of put it like this. I've been trying to say to people as as often and at the same time as gently as i can in a world of social media which makes it seem like it's very like social and plural but it's really not it's no. very uh you know individual focused like your this is just a good word for everybody i think uh your social media is presenting a singular message that you may or may not be aware of mm -hmm. and there are people god love them like on, I see on social media who I know, and I just know that the message they are projecting is not the one that they want to. It's not the one that they intend to, you know, uh, like people who for some reason on media get extra confrontational or extra dogmatic about, about particular issues. And you're sending something out and look, and there's other people, look, I can tell like, man, if I know one thing about this person based on their social media, it's that they enjoy life and they love to travel. Or it might be this person, man, they love their dog. Like they love their dog a lot. Like mm -hmm. that's, they enjoy, that person loves their family, man. Everything about them is just all, and you're kind of putting out that message. Right. And well, maybe that they're like a big Montreal Canadiens fan. It, it could be that too. There's all kinds of good things that it could be. Um, yes. Pointing to the shirt. That's what made the point. Oh yeah. Anyway, but I'm just saying, just like, right. There's a message out there, right? Like, they, like you've got good taste or whatever it is. Your life does that as well. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. Even for the person who's not interested in church, they're not interested in spiritual things, or that's what they think anyway. They're like, well, I don't worship anything. I don't worship it. It's not possible. It's not. No. Because that's what you were created to do. You that's can't right. help it. And your life sings a song of worship to someone or something. It yep. just does even if that someone is you that's right yes exactly and that that's a that, look that'd be a popular song for sure yeah. and so this is what we have to understand when we when we read this is that when it says you offer your bodies as living sacrifices like you are you like like we've said a hundred times throughout this series of preaching in this podcast you're living out your belief yeah well, and so we do 
it's going to, it's going to proclaim. And so that's why, you know, I'm not looking over like, well, what's your song? What's your song? He says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Like it's, and when you do this, this act of worship is actually renewing your mind that God is making you more and more like Jesus. Yeah. And look, the more that you renew your mind and you're not conformed to the world, but you are focused on who you are in Christ and what you want to be on Christ, then people are going to obviously see that out in the world. And again, it's, you know, it's not like that doesn't mean that, you know, like, well, if you have, if you're a Facebook person that you have to like, you know, make your profile picture a Bible verse and that you have to put out you versions verse of the day every day. And that, you know, you have to make sure everybody knows your Catholic Sunday school. Okay. Right. It's not what we're talking about. Um, and, and that wouldn't be authentic either. If all of a sudden you're just like, okay, well, I'm going to do that for that purpose. Um, but I think there's value in assessing both, um, what is it that I'm really about? And, you know, am I about the things that I think I'm about? And am I about, you know, if you are a Christian and you want to focus on, you know, worshiping God and pleasing God, you know, sorting out who I am in that, in that vein and, and actually being transformed in my mind. Um, but also I think it's good to assess and even question what do I put out to the world? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, and again, it's not just, a, I mean, it's a good word anyway, like you said, you know, even just in terms of social media thing too, because like for me, and I'm sure for, for you and for anybody that's listening, I think, you know, if you, if you want to talk about somebody who uses social media, not in a, let's say not in a positive way, let's frame it up that way. Right. You know, somebody immediately comes to mind, right? Oh yeah. You're thinking of somebody. Yeah, you are. And, and if you can't think of anybody. It's you. No, I'm just kidding. Might, <laughs> that might not be true. Um, but, but, but what's hilarious is like, I like, I can think of like, I'm thinking of, of a person, right. Mm -hmm. And they are somebody who is, is very mild uh, to speak to. Um, I, I would, I wouldn't say meek, but like just, they're just a very friendly person and they're kind of unassuming and whatever. And I'll tell you what, the person that I see online is like vicious yeah, and aggressive and, and sometimes frankly childish, mm -hmm. um, you know, antagonistic. And like, I'm just like, I know you and, and that's not even you in real life. Like why? It's just not the song that you want to sing. It's not and, the song that you want to sing. And, and here's the thing, because on the contrast, like, because you'll think of somebody with this too, you know, that person, like they're just, for lack of a better term, they're just good. Like mm -hmm. they're humble and they're wise and they're giving and they're generous and like it just seems like they like the joy of the Lord is their strength. And I don't say that in any sort of like, you know, kind of goofy kind of sing songy type of way. I mean, like they are just living it. You know what I mean? You see them, they just seem to be measured and you look at them and you're like, how do they do it? This is how they do it. Yeah. They live their lives as sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. They understand that their life is singing a song of worship. They're not like the rest of the world. That's why they stand out. That's why you're thinking of them right now. And the reason they're able, like the reason they come off that way is you look at the end of the verse is because they are able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And because they have discernment That's right. in their worship, they live out their belief in this obvious way and it's not like an everybody look at me way it seems effortless because the focus is on god and not on them that's right because what come whatever comes down the pike they just seem to have a a good uh nose to just take it and put it in the bin that it goes in yes and and look if, if this is this is the stuff that weighs us down okay so i just shake that off and like this is stuff that gives glory to god and so we amplify that and we focus there and live there and, and again, it's a living out. It's a daily expression of mm -hmm. who you are in Christ. And, and just by living that, you will naturally live your life in the rhythms of worship. You just will. That's right. And so we, we started and we widened out talking about the group consciousness of the church and what they are devoted to. We've narrowed it down in talking about our individual lives being a spiritual act of worship. So move into now into Hebrews 10, we're going to widen it out again. And this is a verse that can sometimes just generate some discussion of say, well, what's it really focusing on? But we're going to, we're going to devote on it. We're going to come in here. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And look, this is a, this is a good word coming out of a season where we were we were kept apart. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is you know I've said many times about about God and in, in, in Scripture that he's he's not big on suggestions. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll you'll way more find commands, and this is a reminder of a command. It says you know let's not neglect. Like it's it's kind of a gentle way the Hebrew writer says, let's not neglect meeting together. Right. Let's not do that. We know that's and not that, good. Let's not do that. What he's saying is we gotta get together. The way yes. we're supposed to get together, the way we're supposed to commune, the koinonia thing, like because we need to. So we can stir one another up or or spur one another on, encouraging one another. Uh, and he says, all the may, all the more as you see the day drawing near. That's talking about as we get ready for Christ's return. This is right. living as though you expect Christ to return the way he said he would. And if you believe he's coming back, then I, then I got to think that you're going to want help to be the best version of yourself, the best worshiper and the best person that you can be. It's It's practice for heaven. Yeah. That's what it is. And look, people will take this verse, and I know, listen. I understand there are people that will take, like you said earlier, as if like being at church a couple hours a week is, you know, equal to devotion and saying like, well, this is the go to church verse, right? And and sometimes we do have an overemphasis on like the Sunday morning experience. Like it's the be all end all of the Christian experience because it isn't. But I tell you what, I don't know of a more effective or at least obvious way to get as many people together as often as we do on, on Sunday morning. and. We've talked about this before. Look, sometimes someone will say, well, I just don't get as much out of that. You know what I mean? Like for me, it's when it's like just me and Jesus in the woods or, or even it's just like, you know what? I just have like two people that I meet with and we have breakfast and we talk about all these things. It's like, and you know what? You and Jesus in the woods. That's fantastic. That's great. That's where like, really like get your, you know, that's where you really meet with the Lord. Do it. And if it's just like two or three people and you get together and have breakfast and you solve all the world's problems and, and God speaks to you in incredible way, great. But not at the expense of this. No. And then you say, well, it's like I don't get anything out of it. If I, I love it. It says, let's consider how we may spur one another on. It doesn't say, go get spurred on. I think that'll happen. But that's not the emphasis. Because when you're going like that, well, that's just not what I get out of it. It's like, well, that's, it's not about you anyway. So don't worry about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're not devoted to you. You know, devoted to what you get. You know, I, I was like, I'm trying to think of even where I first heard this. It's not unique to me at all. But, you know, t- somebody asked a question, like, say, you leave church. And I think we've all been guilty of this, where you just get home on a Sunday and go, like, I didn't get anything out of that. I was like, what did you put into it? Yeah. What did you go to give? Because I promise if you didn't go to give anything, it's going to be a lot harder to get anything out of it as well. You know, well, and- you're going to worship. And, and look, and we prepare, right? Like if, if it's an important part of your life, and, and hopefully that it is, mm-hmm. you know, then I don't think you should just show up with like, oh, I wonder what's happening today, or I wonder how this is going to go. You, you, you know, I think that at, at least where we're coming from, it's a pretty good indicator what we're going to be talking about that day, for one. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I hope that, that people are following along the best they can, if, if not uh, with a copy of Core 52, then... You know, there's lots of resources online that let you know what's coming up and, and all that good stuff. Um, you know, we talked about the analogy of like the Thanksgiving dinner that you wouldn't just, you know, show up unannounced, dive in to the food, not talk to anybody, just consume and then head out um, as a, like an individual partaking of just the food itself. That would right. be and that then, would be and then, yeah, home would be like that turkey was a little dry, as yeah. if you as, as if you had it. Yeah, you missed it, man. You missed it. Like, and yeah, like, yeah. You know, you just like I think we ought to prepare for something that's important. And here's the other thing too: is like, yeah, two hours on Sunday is not the sum total, and praise God for that. But if you've got something that you have kept going on an ongoing basis to the same extent, and that. I, I dare say is as effective and informative 
and a blessing to you and a blessing that you can pass on to others as meeting together with other Christians for communal worship. I'd love to hear what it is. Yeah. Because I just, I, I challenge you to find something that does what this body does. And I don't just mean again, too, and it's, yeah, it's two hours on Sunday, but it's like, if, if that's all your, uh, if that's the sum total of your interaction with your church family, the church body, Mm -hmm. then you are, you are going to worship, but I don't know that you are part of the church Mm -hmm. and we want to be part of the church. That's right. The church is worshiping, but like, you're a part of that body and it's, it's not just two hours on Sunday. It just isn't. That's right. And so look, we want to see you know, worship at the, at the communal level with, with other believers. And we also want to see it at, at our core, right? When it's, it's just you and the Lord, be it in the woods or wherever you happen to be. Right. Uh, it's, it's going to be, it wants to be the song of your life. Right. Um, your, your life sings a song and, and I pray that it's a worship song. That's it. I think that's, that's the button right there. Right. Now Dan is going to lead us in uh, Life Song by uh, Casting Crowns. I thought uh, we agreed away, on to me. I'm not ready. So, no, listen, it's it's wonderful. We're not going to get into any sort of uh, specific worship type. But what we are going to do is we're going to pray. And we're going to pray uh, that hopefully there's some connection here for us together. And uh, pray that, you know, this is a, hopefully this is a helpful time, whether you're listening to this alone or, or however it is that you take this stuff in. And uh, know that, uh, that you know, the worship that we offer to the Lord, we want it to be good and pleasing to him the same way that our lives are. So yeah, let's take some time and, and pray. All right, let's do it. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We acknowledge you for who you are and for what you've done. And Lord, I'm, I'm grateful that you hear our prayers when we're alone. And Lord, I'm, I'm grateful that when we stand shoulder to shoulder with three or 3,000, that you hear us. I thank you, Lord, for the right standing that we have with you. I thank you for the right standing that we have with one another in you. And I pray, Lord, that this encourages hearts today, even as Ben and I are able to talk and encourage one another. I pray that anyone who's interacting with this, Lord, they would be uh, encouraged and that they would direct all worship and praise to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right on. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for joining us, everybody who's tuned in. And uh, we look forward to doing it all over again uh, next week. And, uh, you know, as long as the tech holds up, eh? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Do it once a week. You get good at it, maybe. Ah! All right. Until then, we'll see you then. Okay.